The Tudor period is remembered today for being a time of much brutality and execution, as kings such as Henry VIII and his first daughter Bloody Mary I put many people to death across England. Henry VIII would slaughter over 70,000 people throughout his four decades on the throne, and many, including his wives and close friends, were not exempt from the executioner's acts. But the Tudor period began following the Battle of Bosworth Field and the defeat of Richard III. The notorious Yorkist king was slaughtered, and following this, the reign of the Tudor kings and queens began, as Henry VII was crowned a short distance away from the battlefield. Henry would begin to execute a number of officials to bring a bloody end to Richard III's regime, and he ordered a number of executions a short distance away from the battlefield of Bosworth, the scene of his greatest victory. But one of the first executions of the Tudor period, if not the first high-profile execution, would be that of William Catesby's. But what is the story of this? Join us today as we find out, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. William Catesby was born in 1450, and he was one of the most senior counsellors and friends of Richard III. He would throughout his life serve the king in a number of powerful positions, including the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Speaker of the House of Commons. He was the son of a well-off landowner, and in his younger life he was an aspiring lawyer who worked for William, the first Lord Hastings. Hastings would be the most powerful and richest man living in Richard III's England, but he was executed inside the Tower of London, after a meeting with the king which went wrong, and Richard III showed his brutal side, screaming and berating Hastings, before he was dragged down and beheaded on the tower's cobbled floors. Catesby was married to Margaret, the daughter of William Lazouche, and the couple had three sons. Following the death of his father, he inherited a huge number of manors in the Midlands, and was very wealthy. He performed an important role in government before Richard III's reign, as he was part of the ruling council that governed, during the brief uncoronated reign of the young Edward V. But Richard III would spectacularly dethrone his young nephew, as he declared that Edward V and his younger brother Richard were illegitimate, and were the product of an affair that Edward IV had, and Parliament passed an act of legislation, barring the young boy from the throne, and after this Richard III usurped onto it. Catesby then became a trusted and close adviser, and Richard was a king, who could very quickly turn against his closest friends, and to be on his good side was positive, but it was still very dangerous. As the king's chancellor of the exchequer, he was in charge of the country's economy and the royal treasury, and he then served as a speaker of the House of Commons in 1484, and he also sat in Parliament as a knight for Northamptonshire. He was given a huge amount of reward and land from Richard III, and was given so much that he was one of the richest knights in England. In July 1484, he was mentioned alongside three other key aides to the king, and it was said, the cat, the rat, and love aloud dog rule all England under a hog. It's believed that William Catesby was one of two councillors who told the king that if he married Elizabeth of York, there would be huge issues in the north and rebellions would arise. However, the rebellion would come in the form of the Tudor rebellion, led by Henry Tudor, the future Henry VII. This would culminate in a huge and final battle of the Wars of the Roses, known as the Battle of Bosworth Field. In Leicestershire, the House of York, led by Richard III, would meet the House of Lancaster in a brutal and deadly battle on the 22nd of August 1485. It would be Henry Tudor who was victorious, as Richard III was unhorsed fighting in a marsh, and then he was surrounded by enemy soldiers and was brutally cut down. With the death of Richard, Henry Tudor became king, and the Tudor period began, and following this he sought to deal with the remaining parts of the rule of Richard III. He had to impose himself well on the throne, and deal with any form of dissent quickly and brutally. The way he did this was through a number of executions, and despite fighting at the Battle of Bosworth, William Catesby was captured fighting alongside Richard. As Catesby was a powerful and influential figure and friend to Richard III, Henry VII, the now king, ordered his execution to take place. Catesby was taken into Leicester, the nearby city, where Richard III's body was being displayed for the public, and in front of a crowd he met an executioner, who was armed with an axe. A chronicler sarcastically claimed that Catesby was executed as a final reward for his excellent service, and he was one of the only men of such power and importance to be killed in the aftermath of the battle. He was certainly the most high-profile captured soldier to fight alongside Richard III, and he was believed to have been a key part of the dishonourable accession to Richard III to the throne. But Catesby's mention was executed in front of a crowd in Leicester, and following his execution, 
his body was taken back to the church of Ashby St. Ledger for burial. His execution would be the first of the Tudor period, and certainly the first high-profile execution of a time period that led to Queen's being beheaded. After his death, the lands and estates he possessed were confiscated by Henry VII, and interestingly, Catesby's relative would be Robert Catesby, the leader of the gunpowder plot, who would plan to block the Houses of Parliament on November the 5th. But a short distance from the battlefield, where his master and close friend Richard III was killed in battle, William Catesby lost his head also. Throughout the Tudor period, prominent figures such as Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, Thomas Cromwell, Thomas Cranmer, Sir Thomas More and Lady Jane Grey were brutally executed. But William Catesby's execution was the first in a long line of Tudor executions. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.